This film negative scan was altered by AI and fixed. I bet you can't tell what I did. Still can't tell? All right, watch the rest of this video. This video is sponsored by KEH Camera. YouTube, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about AI, specifically the generative fill tool within Photoshop beta. And that tool is fantastic. It actually lets you create data kind of out of thin air. You give it a prompt and it creates the data and the pixels to include in your image. Um, this is quite crazy, um, honestly, and it's pretty amazing how powerful it is. I've seen all kinds of different applications online um, from you know creating brand new information in an image to making your image bigger by filling in whatever background that doesn't exist to what I'm about to do today, which is actually remove light leaks from a film scan. And the image that I'm gonna show you here actually has a light leak baked in because the camera itself has a light leak and therefore light got onto the negative while I was taking the photo. So we're gonna to try to fix that today using the generative fill tool in Photoshop beta. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take the select tool here and I'm gonna draw a selection around this part of the light leak. And we're gonna break this up into two different parts because I think we'll have better odds of actually fixing this image. So I've done that there. I've got my selection, you can see. And all I'm gonna do is click generative fill. So when I click this, now I can type in whatever the prompt is. And I'm gonna say, fix the light leak on this film scan and make the image look as if there is no light leak. Uh, writing prompts is basically gonna be the new skill of the 21st century. Therefore, you know, I don't know if this prompt is good or not, but we're gonna try it. Um, so yeah, fix the light leak on this film scan and make the image look as if there is no light leak. Generate. And you have to be on the internet to do this because this is how you actually communicate um, with the AI engine behind all this. And it takes, you know, a few seconds here. It's probably been almost 10 seconds at this point. Um, let's say 15, 20 seconds total. And I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. So it's about done here. And whoa, what happened here? Um, I think my prompt is not a good one. So let's actually try this again. Let's delete that layer. Let's select this one more time. Okay. All right, one more prompt here. So I said, remove the light leak from this image and make it look clean, generate. Let's try this again. Um, I've done this once before and it got really good results. You can see on this Instagram reel here. Um, so it all depends on what you do with the actual prompt. And I guess if you do the exact same prompt each time, you're probably gonna get different results because the AI tool is living and it's not breathing, but it's living and learning. So look at this right here. This looks pretty awesome. You see this weird kind of hue right here, which I think is left over from the original light leak. So the engine wasn't able to perfectly clean it out, but this looks really good. And what's most interesting to me is the data that was kind of created out of thin air by the AI in order to fill in the space behind the light leak, this stuff right here. Let's actually try to clean this one up right here. Sorry for the motocross in the background. I can't control that. Okay, so generative fill. And we're gonna do the same prompt that I did earlier. Remove the light leak from this image and make it look clean. Now I'm actually gonna say blue light leak here just to be even more specific. I guess the more specific, the better. Um, click generate. Um, so image is looking pretty good so far and I'm really curious what's gonna happen with this one here because there's a lot of different kind of textures in the image. You've got the chain link fence, you've got the shirt and there it is. I'm actually gonna move this down here so we get a better look. Um, if I were to show you this image from scratch, do you think you would notice immediately that a, that there was a light leak and B, that, you know, some of this data on his shirt isn't real. It isn't what it actually was in real life. I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, KEH. Buying used camera gear is amazing because you as a consumer get what you want and you get it without creating new waste streams by buying brand new products. And fortunately, KEH is a great place to buy used cameras because you get such great products and you get really amazing service as well. They review and grade each and every single camera, allowing you to choose whatever option suits your budget best. You will know exactly what condition your equipment is before buying it. Make sure to use the affiliate links down below to help support this channel. And KEH has been nice enough to include a 5% off discount code below and a bonus 5% off discount code for this month only. Check it out. Um, I'm gonna combine these two and put them in a folder so we can turn it on and off. So look at this. 
original photo here, you can see the P from Puma and the U, see the light leak. If we look at the parking sign right here, you see there's a P here too. And then the rest of this is kind of bokeh texture, which I guess is easy to fix. Let's turn this on. Really interesting what happened here. The P disappeared for whatever reason. And then there's this kind of make-believe texture that was created on the side here. And then if you look at the logo on the shirt, so first of all, the light leak is basically completely gone. You can hardly see a trace of it, which is pretty cool. And then this used to be a P and now it is a shape. It looks like a W or some sort of like an infinity sign. I don't know, but it's pretty cool what this can do. Um, this image right now by itself, if you showed it to anybody kind of from scratch without telling them that you actually you know, did anything with the AI tool, they wouldn't immediately be able to tell that anything's kind of weird. They might see this little blue haze here, which they'd be curious about, but their answer wouldn't be that it's AI. So this tool is quite powerful. Let's use one more image and see if we can do something more interesting. All right, so we've got our second image here, similar situation, same exact problem with the same camera, same everything. Um, but the light leak here, there's a lot more texture, a lot more stuff going on in the background. So I'm curious if AI can handle this. Um, so let me select this part of the image here. And this light leak kind of fades, so it's really hard to just isolate it. Um, it's got a bit of feathering on this side here. So yeah, let's do generative fill. Remove the light leak in the image and make it look clean. All right, so you see the result here. This isn't perfect. It looks like uh, this weird fit, uh, haze. Not sure you know, what this is supposed to be, but um, in terms of the actual content of the image in the back, this looks kind of normal, except what is this right here? A wall just appeared out of nowhere. Let's turn it on and off. Yeah, there's a brick wall here and I don't know what the point of that is. So <laughs> that's interesting. Let's do this one more time and see if we can clean up this bottom one here. So same thing, I'm gonna select it. I guess you don't want to select more than you need to because theoretically all of it is fair game for the AI tool. Generative fill and we'll type in the same thing. Remove the blue light leak and make the image look clean. I'm actually going to remove the word blue because this one's not obviously blue. Generate. Okay. So Let's combine the layers here and we'll do kind of an overall. So this is the original and this is the new one. Here you can see this is, this did not do a good job. It looks pretty bad. And actually let's zoom into the hands to see what happens. Yeah, AI is terrible with hands. I'm sure that'll get fixed at some point, but those hands look terrible. <laughs> so not a good job here by the AI tool, but I'm still kind of intrigued and still kind of impressed as well because I mean, especially in this image here, I think what, what really surprises me is the data that the AI tool creates. This isn't your classic, you know, uh, sample and then heal or sample and clone. The data that this is creating is based on AI tools and the AI quote unquote thinking. This isn't sampling from the existing image, which is kind of the legacy way of doing these things. This is creating brand new data um, to kind of mesh with the existing image. And this data is coming from what the AI learns from all of the images that it has scoured all over the internet and all of the data that is powering this kind of knowledge base for the AI. So this is just the start. We'll see what happens as this technology gets better and better and better. And I've already seen some really amazing applications for this in other options um, and, and other things that people are doing. So go on Instagram, look up the Photoshop account or the Lightroom account, and you'll see what's going on with the beta. There's some really, really cool and powerful stuff, but is it gonna change photography forever? Probably, honestly. I don't think it'll change, you know, our squad, the film photographers, because AI can't generate a negative, um, a physical negative, that is, you know, the thing that you develop and that you can touch and hold in your hand and then darkroom print. AI can't do that. So I think as long as AI can't do that, we're safe. Um, the thing that I have seen that's kind of interesting and kind of scary is that people are creating images that have never existed um, from scratch using AI tools, uh, not specifically in Photoshop, but other things like in the Discord channels. Um, you give it a prompt, you create a scene, you tell it what mood, what aesthetic, the colors, you even say what film stock, and it's gonna spit out an image. Check out these examples right here. None of these images are of things that actually happen, but um, they're kind of created by AI based off of prompts given to it by random people like you and I. And these prompts could be related to something historical. You can say, 
you know, give me some images that are related to the Cuban Revolution um, and, you know, create it during sunset and put a strong female lead in the image and, you know, put some flags in the background. It's going to create that and it's going to look pretty interestingly good, honestly. The hands are still a dead giveaway right now, but the images do look cool. This is going to be a problem because you can create whatever you want out of thin air and if you spread it around on the internet fast enough, people will see it and they will believe it. They won't challenge it. They won't ask questions. They'll just keep sharing it, especially if it's controversial. So I'm not really excited about what's to come with that, but we're there. All right, y'all, that's the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and apologies for all the noise. I'm trying to record out here and it's a bit tough. All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.